Hey everyone, Hal here. This is a follow-up video to my video I made on the Deutsch Yosa algorithm. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing how you can actually implement Deutsch Yosa using Q Sharp, uh, Microsoft's quantum programming language, so that you can run it on a quantum computer. Uh, if you haven't seen the original video, I'd highly suggest you check that out. It walks through the theory behind Deutsch's algorithm so that you can kind of understand how it's able to do what it does. So in order to implement Deutsch's algorithm in Q Sharp, we're first going to need to implement the four functions that we talked about. These functions are the identity, negation, constant zero, and constant one functions. So we'll start off by creating our constant functions. So operation, we'll define an operation. We'll go constant zero. And it's going to take as an argument a qubit array. And then it's going to be returning nothing. So in Qsharp, to signify that we are returning nothing, we use a value called a unit. And constant zero. It does nothing, so we don't have to add any other code. And then we'll define constant one, which again is going to take a qubit array as an argument. We'll also again re be returning a unit. However, this time we're going to apply an X operation onto the first qubit in the array, which is our output qubit. All right, now we'll define the identity operation. Again, qubit array and then returning a unit. The identity operation is created through a controlled not operation where the first or the second qubit in our array will be our control and the first qubit will be our target because our first qubit is our output qubit. Uh, the last operation is the negation. This is pretty similar to the identity operation it's going to return a unit do the same thing with a CNOT where we target or where we can condition it on our second qubit acting on our first qubit and then the last thing we do is we just apply a QS to zero or to our first qubit so these are our two balanced operations and these are our two constants Let's run that, compile those. All right, now that those are comp compiled, we can begin writing our Deutsch algorithm. Um, but actually, before I want to do that, I want to import a couple of functions from Microsoft's, Microsoft's uh, libraries. So we'll implement Microsoft quantum.arrays and dot measurements. What this is going to do is import some really useful functions that will make writing the algorithm a little easier. All right, now that we have that, we can make another cell. We'll begin defining our Deutsch operation. So we'll make an operation, we'll call it Deutsch. It's going to have no arguments and it will be returning a result array. So the first thing we need to do is declare our qubit array. For this version of Deutsch's algorithm, we need two qubits. All right, with that compiled, now we can simulate our Deutsch algorithm. So let's simulate Deutsch. And our output is one, one, as we're expecting, since we're dealing with a constant function. We can see if we run it a couple times that there is no superposition state here. We're always deterministically measuring one, one, which is how we know that our black box is a constant function. Let's switch to one of our balance functions now. We'll have to recompile our operation. And now we can simulate it again. This time we're measuring one zero, as we were expecting, because we know when we're dealing with a balance function, Deutsch's algorithm is always going to deterministically measure a one zero. I hope you've enjoyed this explanation uh, and walked through on how to program Deutsch's algorithm using Q sharp. From here, you could actually take this operation and run it on a real quantum computer, which I think is very fascinating. Uh, if you have any questions about this implementation, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to help. Uh, and if you like this video, just leave a like. Uh, it helped a lot. Thank you.